John, is there a gift of healing today, and are there healers in the church? Um, the list of gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 following includes miracles, faith, healing, wisdom, words of knowledge, tongues, and so on. I don't see any reason that any of those should in principle be eliminated from present experience, at least the possibility of God giving it at any given time. And so I'd say, yes, there is a gift of healing because he, he offered it and gave it to the church and hasn't withdrawn that. And it's just a question of his, like it says in Hebrews 2, 4, he, he, the Holy Spirit gives them according to his sovereign will. And so it's not up to us to, to say he must give it or this church must have this many gifts of healing. Um, what I mean by it is this, and I haven't gotten to your second question about healers yet, so just hold that for a minute. What I mean by the gift is that if the elders, for example, are praying, according to James 5, uh, call the elders and have them anoint with oil and pray, and the gift of faith will heal the sick person. I think what happens there is that as the elders are praying for the sick person, they, they ask the Lord for the gift of healing or the gift of faith. So the prayer of faith there, I think, is almost synonymous with the gift of healing. And I think it's an extraordinary faith. It's a faith for the moment that you are persuaded in your spirit that God wants to touch this person with healing. And you, your faith rises to embrace that conviction and then the gift is given through that faith. And the gift is God's spirit working in that person to heal whatever needs to be done. It might be mental, it might be physical, and God can do that. God is sovereign and he's supernatural in his work and he touches and, and he heals. So a gift of healing is something beyond what doctors can do, though I love doctors and love medicine. I take my Synthroid every day because my thyroid is dead and I'm thankful God's common grace gives us that. Don't regard that as a loss or lack of faith in me that I can't pray my thyroid back into activity. Um, but he does. <laughs> he heals. He, he heals cancer and he heals sore throats in little five-year-olds and, and he rescues from the dead. So we should ask for the gift. So when I stand in front of my people at the end of every service after I preach and I invite them to come pray, I say, I'll pray with you about any need you brought into this room or any need God has awakened in you while I'm preaching. And the needs are amazing. They're of every kind, physical and emotional and relational. And uh, I put my hands on people unless they don't want me to. And I ask God then and there to do something. And if it's a sickness, like if this person's going into the hospital the next day because they've got some lump here, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe even touch their neck or touch their shoulder and say, God, take it away. Take it away. There have been a few where people have come back with excitement that they've been touched and healed. Not many with anything you know, extraordinary, just a steady stream of thank yous for praying. I don't think I hear all of them, but I ask for that gift. Um, with regard to healer, that's a question. When the gift of healing is promised or offered in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, does it mean that a person who has the gift always has the gift? So if you always had that gift, you'd be called a healer, I suppose. And I think the answer is uh, some people are granted success more regularly in praying for healing than others. I wouldn't call them healers because it's got bad connotations. But they have the gift in a more steady state way. But what I, what I don't want us to do is say, okay, I've never spoken in tongues, I've never prophesied, I've never had that kind of faith, I've never healed, I've never done a miracle, therefore I don't have the gift. On with my life. When in fact, I think the gift can come at any moment for a moment. And therefore, you, you don't ask to become a healer. You ask for a gift of healing for your sick wife. You, you, you're kneeling down beside your, your wife who's suffering. And you say, God, 
grant me to be able to minister healing to her. And, and in that moment, he may grant you a gift for her. This is, this is one of the most beautiful things about the body of Christ is, is that God has ordained that, I want to say, most of his blessings be given to us through other people. Isn't it amazing that God has given us each other, the body of Christ? We're not isolated Christians getting all of our blessings vertically. We are in community where most of our blessings are given, I think, horizontally. He gives many directly in our personal closets and devotions, but he gives most of them through other people and the means of, of grace. And so what a sadness if we withdraw from groups of people who in any given moment might have a gift for us. So when I, when I think of small groups, I think of people going to the Lord in the morning before their small groups and saying, Lord, our small group meets tonight and I'm just ordinary. I don't feel very full. I don't feel very strong. I don't feel very intelligent. I don't think I have the gift of teaching, but Lord, I'm a Christian and I'm your child. And there may be some gift you have for me to give to them. Would you just make me ready to receive that gift? And then you come praying, eager, and something you say, something you pray, Something you do in touch or embrace may be exactly what God has appointed for their, for their healing. So um, let's minimize the word healer, I think. Let's ask for gifts of healing and let's be open to the fact that any given person may have hands that are regularly used to heal people.